You guys know any sit down videos without bubble tea isn't complete. I am taking this video after work, so I need some energy. But beside that, this is always a must. Cheers. Since I'm turning 35 this year, which is crazy, it feels like I turned 30 just yesterday. Time flies. And that's the reason why things that matters need to be prioritized now. Otherwise, life will just pass us by. Since I'm approaching my mid-30s, with that, I really want to start prioritizing my fitness journey. And while I was reflecting on this, I realized how much my reasons have changed compared to now versus when I was in my 20s or teens. In the past, I used to focus so much hitting that number on the scale. And that can be one of the goals, but for me, that was the sole reason. And because of that, it was never sustainable all of the reasons were external to get that external validation or to fit within the societal norm and now my reasons have changed my first why is i want to be the healthiest and the most confident version of myself both physically and mentally and the next one is to maintain my physical independence down the line when i'm in my 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s compared to when i was in my 20s versus now, I've noticed a lot of difference in my body already. My knees hurt. In the past, I never had that issue. All these changes are bound to happen and with age, you can't stop it. And the way I can provide my future version the life she deserves is by taking actions now because that's the only thing that I have control over. Beside that, it's all out of my hand. I really want to prioritize strength training and mobility and that's the only way I can give my future self the life she deserves. This year, one of my main goals is to continue working out consistently, which has been been in the back burner since I moved to New York City beginning of 2023. I'm getting back on the horse and investing on myself with the help of Copilot Fitness who is kindly sponsoring today's video. Copilot Fitness gives you the experience of one-on-one -on -one personal trainer. Getting started with it is very easy. You get matched with your trainer and then you have an orientation call. You get to know your trainer and your trainer gets to know you. As part of that onboarding call, we talk about your short-term goals, your long-term goals, your injury, workout history, if I'll be using the gym or if I I'll be working out at home. I'll be developing your routine for you from scratch based on everything that we discussed today, your goals, injuries in mind, and make sure that it's sustainable and something that you can, you know, stick with for a long period of time and something that feels really good for you. All of us have our own unique experiences, challenges, injuries, and what may work for me may not work for you. That's one of the main reasons why I love Copilot Fitness is because each workout plan is tailored to you. Before the pandemic, as well as during the pandemic, I was so consistent with my strength training, but I didn't really focus it on from a holistic approach. My focus was again on the number. It shifted from the number on the scale to the number on my kettlebell or dumbbell. I just wanted to do more and more. I think that period of my life, I was the strongest I've ever been. I was able to do pop-up push-ups. I was doing heavy swings, snatches too. I was working towards unassisted pull-ups, but I did not focus on stretching or warm-up. And I think that's one of the main reason why I ended up getting tennis elbow on both the elbows. <laughs> and after getting tennis elbow, I couldn't go back doing the same workouts anymore. And I remember when I went back to the gym, I felt so lost because I didn't really know how to use any other equipment. I didn't really know where to start. I just used to walk on the treadmill or Stairmaster. And when I started doing the Stairmaster, that's when my knee started to hurt. And it is frustrating to start all over again, but I want to get it right this time around. I want to focus on not just strength training, mobility, stretching. One of the reasons why I have truly struggled keeping up with my fitness is because of competing priorities. I have a full-time corporate job. I work as a business system analyst in an IT department in a healthcare firm. And I have YouTube on the side as well. And right now, I am truly in one of the busiest seasons. Apartment hunting, moving, packing. It's been a lot, honestly. So whatever helps to remove that decision-making process. Like if I don't have to plan my workout, if I don't need to time, Google, figure out what I need to do, there are more chances I will do it since the only thing I have to do is show up. So when you're doing your workouts using Copilot Fitness, warm up the actual workout as well as stretching at the end. Everything is planned. Not just it's planned, it's timed as well. And even rest is timed as well. So it becomes very easy to follow through. And while you're doing your workout, at the same time, you can listen to music as well. And also, I'm not wasting my time trying to figure out or Googling 
how a particular exercise needs to be done and also the video of that exercise is from all different angles in that way when you're doing that exercise on your own you can check your form as well because a lot of times especially if you're a noob it's very confusing if you're doing things correctly or not if your form is correct or not and having your form correct is very important especially for the long term in that way you can avoid injuries let's say an exercise is for 40 seconds the video will go on for 40 seconds as well so if someone works as body doubling too so even though you're doing the workout by yourself someone else is doing the workout somewhat with you so with this i just need to show up and do the workout i don't need to focus on what when and how finding a pocket of time to get it done either in the morning lunchtime evening or nighttime and promising myself to get it done that's what i've prioritized the most right now especially during this busy season of my life eventually i do want to have like a designated time either in the morning or in the evening but right now i can't really do that benefits of doing your daily movements as well as going on a walk i think it plays a big role on maintaining physical independence down the line carrying your grocery carrying your laundry taking the stairs instead of an elevator i feel like all these are so understated all these things adds up at the end i was so frustrated when my injury happened because the only thing that was keeping me going or keeping me in check were my workouts because at that time my negative noise in my head was way louder that is a period of my life when i started my therapy session which i still go on a bi-weekly basis and my therapist is the one who recommended to go on walks that time i was living in downtown jersey city and i used to live very close to the waterfront especially since i have not been working out either walking is form of movement i guess it helps with both the things physical as well as mental health it's just very calming and soothing being in front of the water and just the breeze as well coming outside makes you realize that whatever is bothering you or whatever is making you anxious the world is so much bigger than that like when i see the new york city view and just see people out and about it puts things into perspective and that's what have been helping me basically it made me realize that life is way bigger than what's going on in my head at the time of my life that was one of my favorite way to get my movement and i used to target to get 10k steps i remember i used to get acai bowl or sometimes chipotle and then just go in front of the waterfront if you're just starting off or you're looking for some kind of movement in between your workout days then i highly recommend to go out on walks walks are so underestimated the benefits of it you know when you start something you want to go full steam that's how i was envisioning my comeback to be and at the end it's not sustainable so when i was talking to coach jill about my goals i mentioned to her that i would love to do four to five workouts i have not been working out at all and that's not really a realistic goal and that's what coach jill emphasizes as well i think so many of us fall under that you know we start something new and we're like go all in super excited <laughs> yes <laughs> but um and then we forget to think about like okay reality <laughs> like what can i actually do and you know if this is something that you're like really consistent with after just a couple weeks mm -hmm. let's add that third strength and see how that feels okay. um i'm all for it so we can always increase but i always like to you know build a foundation first that you know you can nail down you know you can be consistent with and feel good with and then build it up we could try two strength routines one yoga and then add the walks in on the non-workout days a combination of strength and yoga or stretching is like the perfect combination for literally ultimate fitness because you can't have strength without mobility and you can't have mobility without strength when you set realistic goals and you achieve it that gives you the proof that you can do it and also makes you realize how you feel once you achieve it all this helps to build that momentum and build that confidence for me i always focus on long-term goals and then i tend to forget about short-term goals because the short-term goals are the stepping stone to meet those long-term goals this is something that i need to constantly remind myself not just for fitness but just life in general Otherwise, you're just setting up yourself for failure.
here. Also, how I track progress has changed as well. In the past, it was always about the numbers, always. So for example, if I haven't worked out for ages and I get one workout in for that week, that is progress. It's better than doing nothing at all. I'm not saying that my goal is not to look fit or toned. I feel like these are byproducts of prioritizing your health, fitness, and your overall well-being. For some reason, if you fall back or if you have to pause and restart all over again, be kind to yourself, jump back and start small again so that you can build that momentum. And remember that as long as you show up for yourself, that matters the most. When I was working out consistently, I had more energy compared to when I stopped working out. Not just my energy level, my mood was better as well. You've probably heard about feel-good endorphins that get released after a workout and that is so true. I know anxiety will always be with me because that's how I've been wired. And knowing that about myself, at least one thing I can do that is within my control is prioritize myself and get my workouts in. Also, just working out releases all that stress and tension. So much during the day, we focus on other people or other priorities. Designating like 30 minutes, one hour for yourself, I think it's one of the best form of self-care. Since social media is so prevalent, we spend so much time on these apps and what you see has so much impact on how you feel and also how you see yourself as well. Constantly when you keep seeing someone's highlight reels, it is so easy to compare. But everyone is fighting their own battle and everyone has different priorities as well in life and you can't really compare to one another. I have to constantly remind myself that my main goal is to be a better version of myself compared to my past self. Whatever social media apps you use if there are any accounts that you follow where you tend to compare negatively or makes you feel insecure then i would suggest to unfollow or mute them because a lot of time when it's out of sight it is out of mind as well when i was back in college instagram it wasn't there yet there was facebook but facebook we were just posting our like random weekend shenanigans. And then on YouTube, we did have a lot of YouTube creators, but it wasn't like how it is right now. But that time, VS models, Victoria's Secret models were on the rise. I remember I created a collage of VS models and I had it right beside my bed. I used to tell myself that is my motivation to get into shape, but the thing is, that's their full-time job. I'm not saying that modeling is not a difficult job. It is. Their job is to look a certain way. I can't really compare myself as a normal person who is not a model and keep them at a pedestal or keep them as my role model when I don't even live that kind of lifestyle. Finding a community that helps you stay accountable as well as motivated, it's very important, both in real life as well as online. For example, finding a workout buddy or your accountability partner helps you tremendously. When I was living in Jersey City, my sister and I, we used to sign up for workout classes and there would be days where I don't want to go for a workout, but because of my sister Patisha, I would end up showing up. There are days when Patisha doesn't want to show up, but because of me, she ends up showing up. There are days where we both don't want to show up we still end up showing up at the end because we don't want to cancel on each other. If you're able to find a workout buddy or an accountability partner, there are more chances for you to show up and stay motivated. Right now, I don't really have a workout buddy, but I have my coach Jill, who is like my accountability partner as well. She sends out positive messages and checks up on me. Hi, Tisha. Happy Thursday. I'm glad that the move is going well. I'm sure it's, you know, stressful and busy, but you're still showing up for your workouts and that's amazing. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon. And when someone is rooting for you, you don't want to disappoint them. So once you're done with your workouts, you can let your coach know how you feel and also if there are any alteration that needs to be done. So when I started, I was using 10 pound dumbbell, but my tennis elbow was bothering me a lot. We dropped down the weight from 10 pounds to 3 pounds and once my elbow stopped flaring up we increased it from 3 to 10 pounds and for mobility workouts i really wanted to include something for knee as well so coach jill included exercises or stretches for knee lower back and then lower body when you're having this conversation with your coach it's iterative as well as a conversation is two ways my relationship with food has changed a lot. I'm definitely not where I want to be. But again, as everything in life, it's work in progress. There is a certain period of time right before my period where I crave a lot. I crave for fried and salty food. When I listen to my cravings, I don't crave those food 
that much anymore if i didn't listen to it my mind would be constantly consumed about food again i'm nowhere close in terms of eating nutritious food or balanced diet food that is something that i do want to focus on because at the end you are what you eat fitness food and body image all of it is such a personal journey but at the end it's all about self-love self-acceptance and striving to be a better version of yourself if you have any additional tips do share in the comments down below and also i have left my co-pilot fitness link in the description box below if you're interested to get 14 days free with your own personal trainer and again thank you so much to co-pilot fitness for sponsoring today's video before i wrap this up if you enjoyed this video if you found this video helpful don't forget to like and subscribe and support the channel whenever you interact with the video either it could be like comment or just watching or sharing it signals youtube algorithm to push out the video to a larger audience if you have an instagram my instagram is tisha shreshta and i'll see you guys in my next one bye